Ensemble Galilei, Galilei was founded in 1990, which was the year the Hubble Space Telescope went up. And I thought that the Hubble Space Telescope was going to change the way that we saw ourselves in the universe in the same huge way that it had been changed when Galileo first put his telescope up to the sky. Um, Ensemble Galilei has a history of doing these multidisciplinary projects. We started using with a show called The Universe of Dreams, using pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. Then we partnered with the National Geographic to do a show called uh, First Person Stories from the Edge of the World about exploration and discovery. And we toured that for about five years. And when we were looking for our next project, we ended up collaborating with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And they have this incredibly strong collection of American photographs. And so we decided to do a show that was really based on some of the subjects that are represented by these incredible photographs. We knew sort of vague categories like the West and the Great Depression and the Native Americans because we were going from what the, was in the what were the strong points of the Met's photographic collection. And so we tried to think about what would either offset the photographs or go further deep, more deeply into it. Speak, speak the words that the photographs were addressing in some way. When we put a project like this together, we do it all together. We, there's no one person who makes decisions. And so we all sit and we all read every page. And unless everyone in the room is absolutely passionate about that piece of text, it doesn't make it in the show. So once we've agreed on enough material to make up a show, a, an evening's performance, then we start adding the music to the text. And then again, we do it this, in this ridiculously democratic fashion where we all sit around together and Lily reads and we start trying out pieces of music. And when we find the perfect piece of music, everybody knows. You don't even have to talk about it because the hair stands, back on, stands up on the back of your neck. It's like instantly you know that's the piece of music. And, and it is the character of the music and it's the tempo of the music and the way that the music matches the words. That's what we're really looking for. So it's a really complicated uh, search. But then when we have it, we know absolutely there's just no question that's what it's going to be. I've just come on this tour, this is my first, uh, my first foray into this type of uh, presentation. And so as I was trying to, you know, introduce myself to these characters that I'm playing and what they're, what they're saying, I was trying to figure out how to enter into that process with them. And it occurred to me that while the content of, of, of the pieces is very powerful and moving, it's not just enough to sort of stand up in front of a bunch of people and sort of sermonize to them, right? So my job, I think, became to figure out the vital need that the characters had to, to communicate to whoever they were speaking to. So it's not just what I'm telling them, but why, you know, why Frederick Douglass needs to say this particular thing to these particular people. And when I sort of locked into that, I think I, I really felt a super strong connection mm. to, the, to the material. And I think the audience does too. The words, the, the poetry, and the, the prose are, are so good yeah. that it's, it's just a joy ride in a way. And the Gettysburg Address, I mean, women aren't usually asked to read the Gettysburg Address. It's really fun. <laughs> it's like some of the best writing yes. we have in America. It's sure. really great. We do draw from, from a lot of traditional music. We have Irish music and Scottish music and a little bit of Swedish music. But then there were places in the show where we did not find music that was just perfect, and so we wrote it ourselves. Um, and so some of the pieces in the, in the show are pieces that are newly composed just for this project. And also one of the other things that we, th that we discovered early on in doing these kind of multidisciplinary things is, is that uh, none of the musicians are reading music. We're, we, none of us are sitting in back of music stands because we realize that that sort of, we, we, just, we become simply the soundtrack if there's something between us and the audience and something between us and each other. So the six of us sit there together really as a unit playing together so that each element of this multidisciplinary show, the photographs are incredibly beautiful. The acting is just outrageously fabulous and the music has its own soul. So there isn't any element of this that is less than the other. They're all sort of supremely artful, but they fit together in this magnificent way. One of the things that I find most interesting about it is that um, looking through the lens of history and this 
beautiful art at the Civil War, say, where our union was in such danger, but really talking about today when, when there's such a divide in the country between rich and poor and demo red and blue um, and other divides. Um, we have this opportunity to have the microcosm of showing a way through of the, the blending of these, these disparate elements and the sort of seamless, com hopefully seam seamless coming together of these different departments. And we inspire each other, and we can't do what the other does. I mean, I sit there and my jaws sort of have to prop up my jaw <laughs> when I'm watching these musicians play because it's really extraordinary. The Winona State University Lyceum Series hosts First Person Seeing America, performed by Ensemble Galilee, tonight at 7.30 p.m. in the Harriet Johnson Auditorium of Thompson Hall. Tickets are $10 and can be purchased online at www.wsuartstickets.com. The show is free to veterans.